डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन रेस्पिरेटरी ऑर्गन्स इन एनिमल्स नाउ वी नो दैट देर आर सो मेनी फाइलम्स ऑफ एनिमल्स देर आर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एनिमल सम ऑफ देम आर एक्वेटिक एंड सम ऑफ देम आर टेरेस्टियल and in this different kind of animal there are various kind of respiratory organ and also the respiratory mechanism is different for example uh, in lower invertebrates like the sponge cylindrate and the flat worms <coughs> respiration take place <coughs> by the diffusion mechanism now what is the diffusion of gases see here in the water this flat worm is shown so in the water flat worm we can see that and now this part this is the cross section <coughs> of flat worm and here this figure this is the body in a cross section and these are the body cell the tissues now <clears throat> in the water oxygen is there in the diffuse form so oxygen from water enters into the cells of the body tissue and co2 diffuse out in the water so here we can see that there is a exchange of gases that is O2 and CO2. So this type of respiration is diffusion of gases, which is mainly found in sponges, cylindrate, and flat worms. Now, <clears throat> the second example. Here in the figure, this is the sponge the body is shown in the cross section now if you observe this figure closely then you will find on the entire body surface of the sponge uh, the pores are present and the cell which are present around this pore these cells are known as the porocyte and there are variety of cell for example this coenocyte cell these are the main cell M most of the function of the body they are performed by this coenocyte cell now what happens uh, with the blue color arrow as you can see water from outside is entering through this pores and this water is carrying all the requirement of the sponge for example the diffuse oxygen is there in the water and the food material is there and water is expelled out and as you can see the large pore is present on the top so this large pore is known as the osculum so when water leaves the body from the osculum all the body cell all the body cell they are releasing co2 in this water and at the same time they are also getting the oxygen which is present inside <coughs> inside the water so water diffuses uh, this uh, oxygen which is present in water is diffusing in the body cell and from the body cell co2 is expelled out so the water which is coming out from the osculum is having the waste material and the co2 so this is the diffusion of uh, o2 and co2 in sponge and here in this figure the entire mechanism that i have explained to you that mechanism you can see that in the figure now these are few example of cylindrate hydra jellyfish <coughs> madrium obelia now in this animals also <coughs> diffusion of gases take place 
oxygen from water enters into the body cell and from the body cell CO2 is removed and it is released in the water. So diffusion of gases. Now the second point. Now the earthworm, they use their moist cuticle. Now the earthworm respire <coughs> through the skin. Their skin is moist. So that's why the earthworms are known as the skin breathers. So the moist skin and here this one, this one is the uh, cross section of the body and the outer skin. This is the skin they are showing and as you can see in the skin, the blood capillary <coughs> is reaching to the outer epidermis and here oxygen atmospheric oxygen is entering into the uh, capillary blood and from the capillary blood co2 is uh, released into the atmosphere so we are remembering this thing the earthworms they are the skin breathers now moving forward now the in insect now we know the arthropoda phylum arthropoda is the largest phylum amongst the animal variety of insect are there in the arthropoda and this phylum is so huge that some of the insect they are the <coughs> terrestrial one and there are so many <coughs> arthropoda they are the aquatic one means the they see they are present in the sea, sea water or in the riverine water also few varieties few classes of the arthropoda so now in the arthropoda in the <coughs> class insecta these animals they are having <coughs> on their body surface uh, they are having the pores and these are not usual pores but they are actually they are known these pores are known as the spiracle and then this spiracle open into the tube and these tubes are known as the tracheal tubes then this tracheal tube they are further divided into tracheole and at the end of the tracheole there is a fluid is there and the oxygen is supplied to the body cell now what is this entire mechanism uh, we are trying to understand this with the help of figure so in this figure here you can see the grasshopper is shown insect okay and one <coughs> box is shown and they are zooming this box so when we are zooming this box what we are observing so on the body surface spiracles are there spiracles means opening this spiracle open into the tubes these tubes are known as the trachea and this tube trachea is further divided into smaller tube and this smaller tubes are known as the tracheole and you see this tracheole they are reaching to the muscle and they are providing the oxygen to the muscle now how this is happening so one more figure this is the respiratory system of cockroach and here you see the spiracle the spiracle which are present in the abdominal region they are known as the abdominal spiracle then thoracic region spiracle okay now here in this figure as you can see the spiracle is shown in the spiracle filtering apparatus is shown then in the spiracle valve is also present okay and this spiracle is opening the same spiracle <coughs> is here they are showing for example see this is the this one is the spiracle okay and this one is the same spiracle now when we 
go inside this spiracle if imagine we are entering into this spiracle then we will reach into the trachea so this tube in which the spiracle is opening this tube is known as the trachea now as you can see that this trachea is further it is branching now so so many branch are arising from this trachea so this new small branches they are known as the they are known as the tracheole so these are the tracheoles also these are all tracheoles and the ends the ends of the tracheole which is shown with the black color these ends are filled with the fluid so atmospheric oxygen enters from the spiracle into the trachea then into the pass oxygen pass into the tracheole then it will enter into this fluid and then oxygen enter into the, this muscle cell now from the muscle cell co2 co2 comes out from the muscle cell and the co2 enters into this fluid of tracheole then co2 moves along <coughs> same path but in opposite direction and co2 comes out from this spiracle so this is how the insect are uh, respiring <laughs> okay so i'm showing you both the figures <clears throat> in this way one more figure is there see over here tracheal system of insect here on the body surface the spiracle is shown this one is the this one is the spiracle now if we enter into the if we enter into the spiracle then we will reach over here for example we are entering so that means we are entering into the trachea and now you see what happens to this trachea it it is further subdivided into small tubes so these narrow tubes are known as the tracheoles and as you can see the tracheoles they are connected the branches of the tracheole they are connected with the muscle cell and here the with the muscle cell the exchange of gases o2 and co2 is going to take place co2 enters into this tracheole and then trachea and then the co2 <coughs> will leave the trachea <coughs> from the spiracle it is entering into the atmosphere and this is the entry of oxygen they are showing so o2 enters co2 is released so the entire figure i am showing you <clears throat> now this is one more figure tracheal system of insect so you can read this spiracle opening at body surface then trachea okay then trachea is further divided into tracheoles oh one minute here the respiration process of frog that is the amphibian is shown we are going to discuss this thing also but right now we are i am showing you this tracheal system of insect so for insect we are remembering tracheal system of respiration then now here this is the fourth point of our discussion now in the fourth point now the special vascularized structure 
and this structure are known as gills so the respiration which occur which take place with the help of gills that type of respiration is known as the bronchial respiration and here this respiration is used by aquatic arthropod as well as the mollusk now we know the mollusk are the soft body animals and most of them are the aquatic one here this is the nudi branch and on the body surface you can see the external external gills are present so for nudi branch we are remembering that the external gills are present as the respiratory organ then in the clam internal gills this one the gill which is present gills which are present in the body inside the body these gills are known as the internal gills so in clam internal gills are present and with the blue color arrow they are also showing the uh, direction of water flow here the water is entering the water flows on the gill then from the gill water comes out and water is leaving the body of clam then here <coughs> this one is the cuttlefish in the cuttlefish internal gills are present now water from outside water enters then water passes on the surface of the gill and then the water comes out now in the fish from the mouth the water is entering then water pass over the gills and water is coming out i am showing you the entire figure so that you can see it properly Okay. So this was the fourth point. Now, Nudi branch, one more figure with clustered external gift gill tufts. So here, Nudi branch is the mollusk, and as you can see, the tuft of gills. external now this one is the larval salamander means the salamander is in the developing stage and as you can see on the body surface you will find the these are the red color red in color these are the external gills okay now tube worm external gills the same figure okay dog internal respiration with the lungs now this respiration the entire chapter is there for human respiratory system so we know <coughs> respiratory organ lungs are there then the trachea is there alveola is there then the capillaries and alveolar surface exchange of gases o2 and co2 the entire chapter is there Okay, so for human, we are remembering the lungs. Now, <coughs> for the vertebrates, the main respiratory organ 
for most of the vertebrate are the lungs okay and these lungs are like the vascularized bag vascular bag like structure are the lungs now the respiration which are performed by the help of lung that type of respiration is known as the pulmonary respiration <clears throat> and here with the help of the lungs the exchange of gases that is the o2 and co2 take place now the amphibians for example the frogs are having lungs the reptiles are having lung birds are having lung mammals also respire through the lungs then uh, amphibian like the frog not only the lung is the respiratory surface but the skin is also very useful respiratory surface so in the frog the cutaneous respiration is also present so this thing we are remembering so here one bird is shown and as you can see inside the body they are showing the respiratory organ uh, lung is shown and if you observe with the lung uh, this bag are attached and this bag or this sac like structure are actually the air sac okay now what happens the atmospheric air <coughs> when enters into the respiratory system that is in the lung and also in the air sac so this along with the lung these air sacs are also filled with the atmospheric air that is the oxygen now the question is why why along with the lung these air sacs are also present in the bird now the reason is see uh, birds need to fly okay and they are flying for a longer duration and longer distances many a times now for this entire journey what happens there is a requirement requirement of oxygen because the muscle of wings they are continuously <coughs> they are their birds are using their wings continuously and in that muscle cell of the wing there is a cellular respiration and this cellular respiration requires oxygen so that time this oxygen which is present in the air sac that oxygen is utilized during the flight of the bird and one more thing that the uh, also this air sac which are which are filled with the air they are also helping this flying bird okay <clears throat> so this is the use of air sac so for bird we are remembering the respiratory organ is the uh, lung and the air sac now if you are interested you can read this information cycle one cycle two how the bird breath okay you can read this information now here here also one bird is shown and here you see the trachea is shown the lung is shown and the air sacs are shown okay and with the one two three four point they have <clears throat> try to explain how the atmospheric and air enters and how the the body <clears throat> from the body the co2 is removed outside but for this lecture we are only remembering the thing that the in birds lungs are present and the air sacs are present as the respiratory organ moving forward <clears throat> now 
now in the dog you can see the lung so dog is a mammal so the respiratory organ <coughs> is lung okay now here this are the with the blue color this one these are the lung lung of frog and you see what happens when the frog is respiring with the help of lung what happens this nostril external nostril is open atmospheric air enters through this nostril and this air enters into the buccal cavity and with the buccal cavity this lungs are attached okay so we can say the lungs are attached to the gut and this air air is entering into the lung so now when the nostril is closed air reach air reach to the lung now in the lung with the blood capillary the gaseous exchange that is the o2 and co2 will take place and co2 will come out from the same path but in the opposite direction okay so i am showing the entire figure amphibian lungs now here in this figure paramecium is shown single cell organism and in the water what happens the oxygen which is dissolved in water is entering into this single cell paramecium and from the body cell of the paramecium that is the single cell the co2 is diffusing out it is released it is coming out now here here in this figure they are the showing they are showing us the cutaneous respiration of frog now this is the epidermis of skin and just beneath the skin the blood <coughs> blood capillaries are present blood vessels are also shown artery and vein now you see from the atmosphere now the, what happens the the frog's skin is very moist and it is very slimy it is very slippery so if you uh, try to capture the frog uh, you won't be able to capture the frog in your hand because uh, the skin is moist okay so it is very difficult to catch or to hold this frog in our hand because the skin is moist and it is very slippery also now in this moist slippery skin what happen the atmospheric air the oxygen is entering into the capillary and from the capillary co2 is released in the atmosphere now in echinoderm see there is a papilla and <clears throat> from the water o2 is entering <coughs> through the papilla and from the papilla the co2 is released outside for example in the starfish now this thing we have discussed insect spiracle trachea tracheole okay the entire mechanism we have learned now this thing this discussion is remaining gill gill in fish and in mammals respiratory organ is the lungs so this is the entire figure i am showing you okay now here the mammalian 
respiratory system lungs and air sac of a bird now in the bird body you can see the lungs are shown and then the air sacs are shown and the air sacs they are present in the different region so they are named differently for example anterior air sac they are known as the anterior sac in the thoracic region they are thoracic and posterior region sac are the posterior sac if you are interested you can go through go through this information if you want you can read but for this lecture i am discussing with you only the respiratory organ okay but if you are interested in mechanism you can go through this <coughs> now here the tracheal tracheal system of insect so here the spiracles spiracles are shown then the trachea internal tube and the tracheole are shown okay now among the vertebrates fishes uses gills for their respiration now here one fish is shown this is the this one is the circulatory <coughs> circulatory system of fish now this one this one is the this one is the heart of fish and you observe this heart so there are total four chamber okay and this four chamber they are making the two pumping chamber for example here ventricle this one is the ventricle then this one is the conus arteriosus then this one is the atrium and this one is the sinusus so this four ventricle conus arteriosus atrium and sinus venosus this four are making two pumping chamber this one and this one two pumping chamber they are making and here from conus arteriosus you see blood vessel is arising and the blood vessel is shown blue in color that means this blood is oxygen deficient or it is co2 rich blood blue color used that means oxygen deficient or the co2 rich blood now where this blood is reaching so the blood reaches to over here so here in the gill in the structure of gill there are blood capillaries and from this blood capillary what happen co2 will come out and o2 will enter what is this entire mechanism what is this entire exchange of gases process that we are going to discuss now okay and once the oxygen enters into this capillary blood of gill so here this vessel this large this vessel this vessel is shown red in color that means it is having oxygenated blood okay now here in this figure you see how water is entering into fish mouth here water is released operculum this one this this flap like structure is the operculum and this operculum guards this operculum covers the gill so when the operculum just open what happen this this water is released out now what is the use water entered from the mouth and water came out now how this thing is going to be benefited to the fish now that thing we are going to discuss 
the respiration through the gill now if you want to read this figure okay one two and three so you can read this now here you see water water flow from the mouth entering through the mouth and then operculum is open and water is released outside now this one is the very very important topic for you see operculum you see operculum then this one this one is the gill gill of fish is shown over here internal gills of a fish and here this one this part this box okay so this is the entire gill red color that you see that is the gill and what the gill is having so gill is having the gill filament so here this this box is zoom over here so this entire part is known as the gill filament and the gill arch so here you focus on the gill filament see this on the gill filament now when we further zoom this gill filament so here this part this part of the gill filament is enlarged and it is shown over here okay now you see the gill filament once again this gill filament this part this part is the gill filament and see this part here this one this one is gill filament gill filament gill filament gill filament gill filament gill filament and all this filament so so you see this one this one is the this one is gill filament this entire gill filament gill filament gill filament gill filament and what this gill filament are made up of so gill filament are made up of lamellae so lamellae is zoomed up over here okay see gill filament made up of lamellae many lamellae are there and we are further zooming this lamellae so now we have zoomed this lamellae now what is there what happens at the lamellar level so at lamellae first of all you see uh, in the lamellae this is the network of blood capillaries this is the network of blood capillary and at the this network you see this blue color tube so this is this one is the efferent filament blood vessel which is having and this efferent filament blood vessel brings oxygen poor blood to the lamella so this 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 one this one is the april apparent filament blood vessel and it is bringing the oxygen poor blood to the lamella now here you see the direction of water flow is also important now here <coughs> from the gill what is happening see with the blue color they are showing the direction of water flow so water flows from the gill that means water flows from the surface of the gill filament and when water flows from this gill, gill filament that means the water flows because the gill filament they are made up of lamellae that means the water flows from the surface of the gill filament now when the water flows from the surface of gill filament that time the oxygen which is present in the water that oxygen enters into this capillary blood so now the capillary blood becomes oxygen rich okay now this capillary which are now oxygen rich uh, 
this capillary join together and they are forming the apparent filament blood vessel and this apparent filament blood vessel is having the oxygen rich blood okay so this is how the respiration through the gill takes place in the fish this is how the o2 and co2 are exchanged capillary blood receives oxygen from the water and from the capillary blood co2 is released in the water and one more thing here we need to understand uh, the counter current mechanism of exchange of gases now what is this counter current exchange of gases that we need to understand so here uh, one lamellae is shown and in the lamellae there is capillary network this one is the capillary network is shown now from the surface of this capillary network what is happening water is flowing so this is the direction of water flow in which direction water is flowing and you see this is the flow of blood so counter current means the flow the flow of water and the flow of blood is opposite in direction water is moving in this direction water is flowing in this direction and blood is flowing in this direction now what happens one more thing we need to observe that see here this what is this percentage i've written 100% 70% 40% 15% what is the meaning of this thing so here what is the meaning of this thing that when when this water is entering uh, it is having 100% oxygen concentration and as you see as the water is moving out flowing out from the family uh, from this lamella what is happening the concentration of o2 is decreasing so why this oxygen concentration is decrease so here see the oxygen oxygen from the water is diffuse out oxygen from the water it release in the capillary blood now uh, initially the capillary blood we know it is it is having the deficiency of oxygen so that's why over here the 5% is written because the capillary blood is having very very low concentration of oxygen but as this water is flowing and the water from the oxygen is entering into the capillary what happened gradually the capillary in the capillary blood the concentration of oxygen is increasing so that's why this percentage are increasing that means the oxygen concentration is increasing in the capillary blood okay so this entire mechanism is counter current exchange mechanism okay so this 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 entire figure uh, is very 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 important for you so you uh, go through this figure very carefully okay then all the information you need all the names okay then scm of gill filament electron microscope <coughs> figure they are showing okay then in this is the respiration by so same thing same thing but uh, from different book <coughs> this image is from this figure is from different book so you can go through this figure also this is also nice one okay then this one this figure direction of water flow operculum okay then the gill then lamella 
ऑक्सीजन रिच ब्लड ऑक्सीजन डेफिशियंट ब्लड वाटर फ्लो के कैपिलरी नेटवर्क सो एवरी थिंग आई हैव ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू दिस थिंग दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ फेस गिल एंड दिस वन दिस फिगर ओके सो दिस इज सेम थिंग दैट दिस इज द डिफरेंट बुक सो दे हार शोइंग द काउंटर करंट एक्सचेंज मेकेनिज्म डिफरेंटली बट सेम थिंग सी हियर हियर इफ यू सी वॉटर ओ टू सैचुरेशन कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ ओ टू सो हायर ऑक्सीजन कंसनट्रेशन इज देयर इनिशियली एंड ग्रेजुअली द ऑक्सीजन सैचुरेशन इज डिक्रीजिंग ओके सो वेन द वॉटर कम्स आउट फ्रॉम द गिल दैट वॉटर इज हैविंग ओनली फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑक्सीजन सैचुरेशन and when it was entering it was having 100% o2 saturation and the fish blood capillary blood 10% o2 saturation and from the water when oxygen enters into the capillary blood that time blood oxygen saturation rises so this is also important figure for you in this figure here you see in the fish mouth how the water is entering uh, here if you observe the operculum is closed right now when the water is entering through the mouth and once the water enters see mouth close mouth open jaw lowered okay then mouth closed mouth closed and operculum is open water flows through the gills and there is a exchange of gases how most bony fishes respire okay so with this we have completed the discussion on respiratory organs in animals i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your studies and also in your exam preparation my name is manish koshti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste